Hey, from this video you will learn how to use checkboxes. Uh, checkboxes allow you to present your users with a list of options and the user can select any or all of the options that are presented to him. So this is the layout that we're going to use in this example. Here I have uh, two checkboxes, one called as extra cheese and the other one named french fries. And you can see the they have the same IDs, the extra cheese and french fries and when I click on the place order button depending upon the option selected will be presenting a toast to the user that's the general idea uh, let's go ahead and let's go to the source folder and here we have our checkbox activity you can see I have already got two reference variables one is the extra cheese checkbox the other one is the french fries checkbox and I also have a reference variable for the place order button and you can also see I've got the references by calling the find view by ID method and also we have a click listener set for the place order button so when we click on the place order button we're going to check which options are selected and display an appropriate toast to the user the other thing you have to check here is the values folder in which we have a bunch of strings that we're going to use and uh, the message order will say burger and followed by the burger, we'll be showing the list of uh, options that the user selected. Instance, if the user chooses just extra cheese, we're going to show burger extra cheese. And if he selects both extra cheese and french fries, we'll be showing burger followed by extra cheese and french fries. That's the whole idea. Let's go and write some code. So inside the onClick method, uh, I'm going to use a new line to separate uh, the options when we are going to display the message. So string new line is equal to system dot get property of line dot separator. So this will get you the line separator option, which is usually the slash n character on Linux and Unix based systems. And now we are going to create a string buffer which will help us to build a string message based on the options that are selected. Buffer is equal to new string buffer. And we are going to append the main message dot append which is burger uh, dot string dot message order so this will first contain burger and once we have other options selected we'll be adding in more strings to this string buffer so to do that I'm going to check if extra cheese checkbox dot is checked then I'm going to append buffer dot append we're going to append the new line character first and again we're going to append extra cheese here so get string or dot string dot extra cheese so we're done with the extra cheese option now we're going to go to french fries french fries checkbox dot is checked so this method will check return if uh, your checkbox is selected. Buffer dot append new line, and then we are going to append the actual option, which is get string. Oops, get string of our dot string dot French fries. Now we are done with both the options, and now it's time to display a toast. So toast dot make text. The context is this, and the text is going to be buffer dot two string, and the duration we're going to show the toast for a long time, which is around three point five seconds. And this time I'm going to chain this call with the show. Last time, or in some of the videos which you have watched, first we get the toast instance, 
by assigning it to a variable and then we call the show method on the toast. But here I'm going to chain the call right here. In we are done with this. Let's go ahead and run this application. Here it is. So first let's click on place order and it says burger because we have not selected any of the options. Let me select extra cheese and yes it says burger extra cheese. Let me select french fries and let's try it once again. Works and just as expected. So that's how you use a checkbox and besides using you can also use an on click listener on the checkbox and you can also use a check change listener on the checkbox so the situation really depends upon what you're trying to do if you really want to listen to uh, the state of the checkbox if you want to be notified whenever the state of your checkbox is being changed then you should definitely go with this on uh, check to change listener the only difference between an on click listener or a uh, on check change listener when you're using it on a checkbox is the on check change listener comes with an additional parameter which will give you the current state of the checkbox so that's the only difference and uh, you can try that out by yourself uh, I'll leave it to you and there'll be also an exercise uh, that will be based on the on check change listener but I'm leaving that to you because you must be almost comfortable with event listeners as of now and uh, it's really easy to use it so that's about it and uh, if you have any questions please feel free to ask thank you